Listen, man, we have got to discuss the matter of triple banners because some of these rerun wait times are becoming absurd. My name is Juice and let's get into it. This is mostly going to be more of a video to listen to, and I really encourage that you tell me your opinions on the matter down below in the comments. You're more than welcome to disagree with me, and I invite all sorts of opinions. Alright, let's go. Now, I think everybody knows the two five-star characters which inspired the making of this video, those two being Shenhe and Riesli. Riesli, to me, is the most shocking one, even though he's been gone for a shorter time compared to Shenhe, and that's because why did he not come back at all during Fontaine. You could argue, oh, he was one of the worst Fontaine units, but he's still not that bad. His best in slot melt team is actually pretty good, and sure, he does want C1R1 to feel at his best, but so do plenty of other characters like Hu Tao and Chiori, that's not really a rare thing. And we've gotten a Chiori rerun this patch, and we have gotten a Hu Tao rerun this patch, so where is Riesli? This would have been probably one of the better times to release him before the release of another 5 star that people aren't really that interested in, that being Chaska. It would have been a decent dead period, if you will, to slot him in, but they just didn't? So that's a little confusing to me, and Shenha not being back at all for as long as she has is so strange to me. What did she even do to end up going to jail? Like, what? I suppose you could argue that, oh, Cryo's fallen off in the meta, the character wouldn't really sell. I mean, okay, sure, you make a point, but then why did they make a skin for her in 4.4 long after she had one of her reruns? It would have been a perfect time to put her back on banners considering that Xi'an Yun was releasing and she has a relatively close relationship with her. While you may be thinking, Juice, what does that have to do with anything? Well, Genshin themselves said that they wanted to sort of organize these banners around what was happening in the story at the time, but have we just completely forgotten about that? And Hoyaverse did eventually try to introduce something to solve the problem of really old legacy characters never coming back on banners, such as the likes of Albedo, Eula, Klee, you get the gist. Characters that people usually wouldn't prioritize, but they do have their fans, and they solved this with the Chronicled Wish, or at least tried to. The issue is that, first of all, we have no real schedule when it comes to the Chronicled Wish, it sort of just appeared and disappeared. When it was coming out, I was really excited about it because I thought it seemed like a really good feature that had a lot of potential. I myself was pretty hyped to get Eula. I was like, okay, this is great. If they really try to improve upon this, we could end up with a system that's really good for getting those old legacy characters. But now we're in a situation where we're just kind of awkwardly waiting for the next Chronicled Wish. We don't really know when it's coming, who's going to be on it. And feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I believe that in order to qualify for the Chronicled Wish banner, you need to have had at least three reruns. Riesli hasn't even had one, so it's not even like the Chronicled Wish can solve this problem of Hoyaverse where they don't want to rerun specific characters. Now, it does make sense to me that they prioritize the likes of the Archons, popular characters, units who are really good in the current meta, because naturally that's who everyone's saving for right now, those are the characters that are going to generate hype. But with that being said, is that any justification for Kokomi not having been rerun since 3.8? That's over a year ago at this stage. This isn't really a recent issue either. Genshin has had a really strange history of just being really inconsistent with how they set up their banners. Who remembers when Yula took way too long to get a rerun? Not the Chronicled Wish one, I mean a proper rerun. That was a really long wait. And if we're gonna use a really old example, I believe that it took forever for the likes of Hu Tao, Ganyu, and Xiao to come back for the first time. Their first reruns took ages to return. And then you had other weird inconsistencies which were the opposite problem, aka who remembers when Yoi Mia got rerun banners? Like, constantly. She was obviously being used as a quote-unquote break banner so that people had time to save for other banners. So hear me out, I think we should have triple banners. Hear me out. I know that back when we had way less characters, it was a much more daunting concept. After all, how was a free-to-play supposed to gather enough pulls to get all the characters that they want in such a short period of time? But here's the thing, the banner schedules, evidently, are really whack. Like, they make no sense as we've just discussed. So what's the problem with triple banners? Because they're going to speed up the return of characters that Hoyaverse doesn't really want to return, but has to put them back eventually. 
Sure, it might not coincide with the story every time, but I don't really think that's much of a problem because not every banner placement really links to the story anyway. Think about it like this. In 5.0, they put Raiden Shogun and Kazuha as the two rerun banners. They had nothing to do with the start of Natlan. They were put there because they're both popular characters. One of them is one of the best characters in the game, that being Kazuha, and then the other one is just really freaking popular, that being the Raiden Shogun. It's also kind of necessary for them to speed up the rate of reruns so that we're able to put more characters on the Chronicled Wish eventually. If they want to use that as their dumping ground for old legacy units, then they kinda have to speed up the rate of which old characters are getting reran, because at this stage, certain units are just not gonna be on that banner. And once again, we need a more structured rota of when we actually get that banner. We need to be able to plan ahead of time, okay, this is when the next Chronicled Wish is coming back, the same way that in their dev notes they usually say what the next elements are for the next Imaginarium Theater. Then there's the issue of free-to-plays and feeling really pressured to keep up with old banners. Here's the thing, I feel like if people are going for these older characters or if someone is going for a unit who's not particularly good, they were always going to pick that unit over a meta one anyway. If you pulled for Chiori over Shilonen, that's because you really like Chiori, or because you're an Ito main to be fair, but most likely you like Chiori. If when Farina first came out, you picked Baiju over Farina, that's probably because you really liked Baiju. You kind of get the idea at this stage. If someone really likes a character, they're not going to let meta stop them. Shoot, people say it all the time, play who you like, and people will in fact play who they like. Sometimes it is a meta character, sometimes it isn't. And it's not like this issue only affects old characters. Sure, Shenha came out in 2.4, she's a bit older, but Riesli is a newer unit. And it's kind of weird that they haven't brought him back, because at least from what I see, it's not like he's totally unpopular. He has quite a few fans. Linny's had a rerun since his release, and I would argue that Linny is less popular than him as a character. Maybe they're fearful because his initial sales were low, but dude, he came out right after Nouvellette and right before Farina's banner. Of course his sales were going to be garbage. Also, coming out right after Nouvellette, those are some pretty big shoes to fill. I think that the second half of this patch would have been a perfectly good time to run him. After all, the main meet of 5.1 would be over, most people will have played the Archon quest by that stage, most of the version content will have passed. So wouldn't it have made sense to put a character that a lot of people had missed out on on banners at a time where they could more comfortably save for him, especially considering that at least from what I've seen, Chaska hasn't been received particularly delightfully. I do think that she's going to be a big skip for most people, especially considering that Molvu Ika is probably going to be the patch after her. And here's the thing, it doesn't matter if Shenha comes back in the next patch, if Riesli comes back in the next two patches or something, because the core issue still remains. That being that the organization and scheduling of banners just doesn't really make sense and kinda needs to be changed, otherwise it results in certain units just not coming back for a long time, for whatever reason, honestly. If it's not Riesli and Shenha, then it's gonna be Yula. If it's not Yula, then it's Xiao and Ganyu from way back when, you know? There's always gonna be at least one or two units that are shouldering this burden, which triple banners would really easily solve this then people who do like the character can have access to them. Because like I said, if someone wants the character, they're gonna be going after them anyway. It's a bit weird to gatekeep these units for so long. What's even stranger is creating skins for units that have not been here in forever. Ganyu's also been gone for Archons knows how long and she got a skin next to Shenha. But how are people supposed to use the skin if the character is unavailable? I do think this is probably why they like to focus on standard characters or really old characters when it comes to skins, because then more people are going to have a unit. But even so, would it not make more sense to just rerun the character that you're selling a skin for? And I can understand the argument against, after all, you might be a free-to-play or a low spender and Hoyverse could have this crazy, amazing banner shoot. Let's take Movu Ika as an example. Whoa, Pyro Archon, they're absolutely busted. Everyone wants the unit. And then there's some crazy second banner to your company. And then the third banner is a unit that you've been really wanting for a long time, but unfortunately they've been put next to this amazing, wild, must-pull release. I can understand the sentiment against doing this, but I personally think that it would take you less time to get the unit that you want with triple banners and the unit coming back faster than they would have before, as opposed to the unit taking like a year to come out at a quote-unquote ideal time, or being used as a quote-unquote break banner. 
I also think that this would allow patches in general to be more exciting. Instead of having a patch where they just sort of group up all the units that nobody really wants, they can have every patch be a banger with characters that everyone wants, and then some characters that are less exciting but they still have their fans. And sure, some units do just suck and it's really hard to justify rerunning a character who just has no meta value whatsoever, but the story is a big part of Genshin, personality is a big part of Genshin, designs are too, there are going to be people who will pull units just for those. So bring in triple banners, and when it comes to the Chronicled Wish, please make it more structured or scheduled or anything. We can't be completely left in the dark about the feature, because then it's just not a useful feature anymore, then it's just kind of like, oh, Here's Hunter's Path, it's back for a couple of weeks, have fun, and then it just leaves. There's nothing overly useful about that in my opinion, because you can't really plan, you don't really know who's going to be on it, it's just sort of a, a dice roll as to who they're going to put on it. And I suppose they've sort of put themselves in a sticky situation here, because here's the thing, Archons are going to be rerunning a lot more than regular characters. Do you think that they're going to want to put Raiden Shogun on the Legacy banner? No way! It's like they're slapping a big ol' outdated label on the foreheads of these characters, which immediately makes them less desirable. Now the other issues regarding Chronicled Wish, that's its own topic for another day. My final point for advocating triple banners would be, it'd be a little awkward if an old character or a unit that just hasn't been around in a very long time received some massive game-breaking buff, but then because a lot of people don't own the character they just sorta can't try the unit, which sucks. In fairness, I do think that Hoyverse does sometimes hold on to units intentionally to build up hype for them. Who remembers when Kazuha hadn't had his first rerun yet? There were always people asking for a Kazuha rerun. It was nuts. But with triple banners, I would say we wouldn't have to worry about that as much because the characters would naturally cycle around a lot faster. No more waiting years for your favorite to come back. I would say it would take at most six months max. The situation with 4 stars is also pretty bad, I know. I did mostly focus on limited 5 stars throughout this video, but I should absolutely mention, holy guacamole, it took so long for Kave to come back on banners. 440 plus days, I believe it was. In fairness, he was like deleting the game, there was actual buggy issues there that resulted in him having to be pulled for a while. But it's insane how long we had to wait for the guy to return. And Hazo, why has Hazo not been back in so long? Huh? Dude's been gatekept for absolutely no good reason, and yet we get like 50 Shang Ling reruns almost every patch. I know that it's important to put the good four stars on banners so that new people can come along and get these good characters, but come on, you have to rerun the others at some point. All in all, what do you think about the prospect of adding triple banners into this game? Do you think it is an absolutely terrible idea no matter what because of how stressful it would be for free-to-plays? Or do you agree with me in regards to how it would cycle around units faster and how the current banner system just isn't working? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. You might think my ideas are absolutely terrible, or you might think that they're pretty decent. Either way, let me know. Hopefully this video was able to tell you why we should have triple banners in Genshin Impact. This has been Juice, signing out, and this is especially annoying for me because I am one of those people who skipped Riesling the first time for Farina, and I really want him to come back.